Hello everyone, welcome to the DH Education Podcast, your program to be updated on the digital heritage education domain. I'm your host, Raul Gomez Hernández, and I'm glad to be here with you. In the 14th episode of the podcast, we will talk about the fourth dimension of the digital heritage education resources through five case studies, Acropolis Museum Kids, Gods in Color Polychromy in Antiquity, Hermitage Academy, and Beethoven's Escape Room. Stay to the end and discover some innovative projects and book recommendations to explore more around this topic. Apart from the workflow, where all the stakeholders are involved, what is essential in the developing process is to define the structure, the elements, and the content of the digital heritage educational resources. For this task, it is necessary to take the four dimensions of the resources. Number one. The communicative dimension. The communicative dimension of digital heritage educational resources is related to the ways the content is presented, how the digital elements generate interaction and engagement with the audience. The elements defining this dimension are digital storytelling, hypermedia elements, ubiquity, immersivity, and gamification. Number two, the pedagogical dimension. The pedagogical dimension of the digital heritage educational resources is related to its pedagogical adaptability and the aims and results of learning. The elements defining this dimension are pedagogical adaptability, learning models, and generic learning outcomes. Number three, the social dimension. The social dimension of the digital heritage educational resources is related to the social and civic values, work with the content, how it helps to improve the values citizen to its users. The elements defining this dimension are inclusion and diversity, sustainability, and human rights. Number four, the psychological dimension. The psychological dimension of digital heritage education resources is related to the way the user establishes an emotional connection with the content. The elements defining this dimension are emotional design and embodiment. To know the full theoretical framework around the fourth dimension, I recommend you to read the series of posts published in the Digital Heritage Educational blog. You will find the direct links in this post as well. Taking this framework, we are going to analyze five resources and platforms to know more about the structure, the elements, and the content they have. Case study number one, Acropolis Museum Kids. Acropolis Museum Kids is an educational platform from the Acropolis Museum of Athens, Greece, aimed for a young public between six and 12 years old. This platform gives to the audience the way of enjoying, creating, and learning about the museum, their critical sites in Greece, through their myths and history in an interactive way. From the communicative perspective, the platform is well-structured, using an informal language focused on its audience with illustrated and evocative content, it has a variety of hypermedia elements that include videos, tests, games, and audios that can allow to become immersive without a link in between resources. It's not an ubiquitous platform, because it's not possible to interact with several devices at the same time to increase their experience, but it's gamified. From the pedagogical dimension, the platform doesn't allow customization, except from the sound, only games are available, but it's not possible to give direct feedback. Its content is easy, since they are adapted to the target audience, although some parts of the handle can be improved. It's an accessible resource that allows keyboard and screen reader handling, and subtitle integration not being possible to just only the colors. The platform can be applied transversally for all education models and generates new knowledge for digital skills, creativity, and critical thinking. From the social dimension, it's a platform where all the content is licensed by copyright, doesn't have element of favor, inclusion, and diversity, although it favors sustainability through the appreciation of natural heritage. From the psychological dimension, it can become immersive and it generates embodiment and also an emotional connection with heritage. Case study number two. Gods in Color, Polychromy in Antiquity. Gods in Color, Polychromy in Antiquity is a digital resource called the editorial of the Liebhaus Museum of Sculpture in Frankfurt, Germany, a museum that works together with the Stedel Museums, also in the same city. The resource aims at general public 
mainly adults, although they can be also be youth. With this resource, you can learn about Greek sculptures, their conservation and decoration, through the painted sculpture of the face-to-face -face exhibition, but digitally. The tutorial is a registered trademark of the Stadel and Schwing Museums in Frankfurt, Germany. Also, other museums in Germany and Switzerland, without a larger project, have also created more resources. All of them can be consulted at ttutorials.ch and on their respective web pages. From the communicative perspective, the resource is well structured, with an accessible but specialized language with illustrated and evocative content. It has a variety of hypermedia elements, including videos, tests, and gamify elements to discover and select, which make it quite immersive because of the wow factor. Also, it's not a ubiquitous resource, since it's not possible to interact with several devices at the same time to increase the experience. From the pedagogical dimension, the platform doesn't allow customization, except from the sound of the videos, and it's not evaluable, as it's not possible to give direct feedback. Its content are easy to understand and follow, although with a specialized but enjoyable language. It's an accessible resource that allows operation by keyboard and screen reader, not being possible to adjust the color or the subtitles of the videos. The resource can be applied transversally for all educational models and generates new knowledge for digital skills, inspiration, and critical thinking about art. The social dimension is a platform where all its content is under copyright license does not have elements that favor inclusion and diversity. In the psychological dimension, it is immersive and it generates embodiment and also an emotional connection with heritage. Case study number three, Hermitage Academy. Hermitage Academy is an educational platform of the Hermitage Museum in St. Petersburg, Russia, aimed at an auto audience. This platform provides the way for the public to know art through the objects, collection and games, with elements of the cultural heritage that the museum places. In the communicative dimension, the platform has sections, but is not well organized. It uses a formal language and everything is illustrated. It has a variety of hypermedia elements, including videos, tests, games and 3D elements, but it doesn't allow to be immersive. It's not an ubiquitous platform, since it's not possible to interact with several devices at the same time to increase experience. But it's gamify, although some gamify elements could be missing that allows the selection or search of resources in a more interesting way. In the pedagogical dimension, the platform doesn't allow customization. Only games and courses are evaluable, but it's not possible to give direct feedback. Its content are simple, although in some parts the handling can be improved. It's not accessible resources that allows handling by keyboard and screen reader, not very efficiently and duration of subtitles, not being possible to adjust the colors. The platform can be recommended in distant education and generate new knowledge, forward communication skills, inspiration and critical thinking. In the social dimension, it's a platform where all its content is under copyright license. It doesn't have elements that favor inclusion and diversity. In the psychological dimension, it doesn't favor embodiment or emotional connection with heritage, as it's neither immersive nor evocative in content. Case study number four, Tate Kids. Tate Kids is an educational platform from the Tate Group of Museums in the United Kingdom, and at the child youth audience, up to 13 year old. This platform provides a way for the public to have fun, make creations, and learn about the history of art through the words of these museums. The platform is well structured, using an informal language focused on its audience with illustrated and evocative content has a variety of hypermedia elements, including videos, tests, games, gamify elements, and audios that can allow to be immersive, although it lacks a continuity story. It's not an ubiquitous platform, since it's not possible to interact with several devices at the same time to increase experience. In the pedagogical dimension, the platform doesn't allow customization except for the sound, only the games are evaluable, but it's not possible to give direct feedback Although according to an interview carried out for the podcast of this investigation to its executive producer, Zoe Smith, from the department data education and digital, requests feedback from their audience and organize benches through the year. Its content are easy, since they are adapted to the target audience. It's an accessible resources that allows keyboard operation, screen reader, and subtitle integration, 
not being possible to adjust the colors. The platform can be recommended in digital learning and generates new knowledge for communication, digital skills, inspiration, creativity, and critical thinking. According to Carrie Thomas, Ted Kids offers positive attitude to young people about art and museums and allows them to develop skills and promote empathy. In the social dimension, the platform, with all its contents under copyright license, focuses on promoting inclusion and diversity and sustainable development through art. In the psychological dimension, it can become immersive, and that generates embodiment and also an emotional connection with art to creative experiences. Case study number five, Beethoven Escape Room. Beethoven Escape Room is an educational resource in the form of a virtual escape room created by Elisabetta Anani, a secondary school teacher at IC Roberto Nori in Roberto, Italy, and a member of the European education community and her secondary school students within the framework of the educational challenge reinventing Beethoven, aimed at young people. This resort, made on the Thinglink platform, allows this audience to have a fun and learn more about the figure and the work of Ludwig van Beethoven through a virtual game in his birthplace. The Reinventing Beethoven Educational Challenge was a challenge launched from October 26 to December 16 from the European Education on the occasion of the 250th anniversary of the birth of Ludwig van Beethoven, coordinated by Raúl Gómez Hernández. Its goals were to foster student creativity digital hardy resources and introduce music as a powerful tool in the classroom. In addition, it's intended through the content published during the time to make students aware about people with disabilities and promote the values and symbols of the European Union such an anthem of joy as the anthem of the European Union. In this challenge, 28 group of primary and secondary students from 11 different countries participated with a final hour ceremony. In the communicative dimension, the resource is well structured with an informal language focus on its audience with illustrated and evocative content. It has a variety of hypermedia elements that includes video, text, audio, and gamify elements that make it immersive. In addition, it can be viewed on virtual reality classes. It's an ubiquitous resource, since the game can be played on various devices that allow finding information and participating in it. In the pedagogical dimension, the resource doesn't allow personalization, except for the sound. It's part of the game, being evaluable, but it's not possible to give direct feedback. Its contents are easy, since its explanations are adapted to the target audience. It's a resource that doesn't have any element of accessibility, beyond being able to select with the head with the virtual reality glasses. The resource can be applied transversely for all education models, and generates new knowledge for our digital skills, creativity, inspiration, and critical thinking. In the social dimension, it's a resource that has all the content under CC BYCA license, Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike, which allows the use, modification, and distribution of the resource for any purpose, as long as the authorship is acknowledged. For its objective, inclusion and diversity, and access to open information are favor. In the psychological dimension, it can become immersive and that is generates embodiment and also an emotional connection with the heritage to the immersive experience of music. If you would like to learn more about diversity and inclusion in the cultural heritage professional environment, I recommend you to read the Diversity and Inclusion Code, published in the Netherlands in 2020. To look at the full reference of the English version, please take a look at the post from this podcast in the DH Education blog. To know more about the psychology of visitor studies and emotional design, read volume 1 of the collected essays published by the Museum of Edinburgh in 2011, titled Social Design in Museum, Psychology of Visitor Studies, written by Stephen Bidgood. If you want to know European projects working on social dimensions in cultural heritage, I recommend you visit the website of the project Cultural Base. This project aims to identify and analyze some of the main debates and controversies around culture, in particular in relation to heritage and European identities. Another interesting project is the Intangible Cultural Heritage and Museums Project. The Intangible Cultural Heritage and Museum Project, IMP, explored a variety of approaches, interactions and practices on intangible cultural heritage in museums in Belgium, the Netherlands, Switzerland, Italy and France. 
How can museums assist in safeguarding of intangible cultural heritage while working alongside its practitioners? How do you know if you are taking the right approach? There are some of the questions that this project is approaching. Thank you very much for being here today with me in this podcast. Next week, it will be the last episode of the podcast, and I'll cover a new methodology approach, including all what we have talked in this podcast. Find all the resources from the topic we talk about in this podcast on the resource section of the DH Education blog. If you like this podcast, subscribe to the YouTube channel, share with your colleagues, follow the podcast on Spotify, iBox, or any platform you listen to, and follow the projects on social media. See you next week.